Today we're going to take a look at mass balances. Now the mass balance is a fundamental tool to environmental engineering. We use this all the time. This is something we really need to understand well. And in its simplest form, we're simply looking at the things that come into a system and the ones that go out. And as we get into more, you know, more advanced versions of it, we're going to start looking at different process that, processes that can happen along the way. For example, you can have biomass that grows inside the system, or you know, while the biomass is growing, the, the substrate or the target, target pollutant is reducing. Um, it's decaying, so you can have growth in decay terms. You can also have accumulation if the volume is changing, like a, a lake where the water level is going up. So we'll get into those in videos to come. But for today, we're just going to look at an in equals out kind of problem. So to start off, we're going to do a mass balance on the water. We have two streams coming together, and we're wondering what's going to be the third stream. So in equals out. So we got Q1 plus Q2 equals Q3. So Q3 equals 1 liter per second plus 2 liters per second. So Q3 is 3 liters per second. Great. That's, you know, that's not a difficult problem. We could have we could have managed that intuitively. So let's add a complication in here. Let's start to look at a conservative substance. So a dissolved compound that's not changing, not growing, not decaying in the system. Salt, for example. So let's give C1 the concentration of 10 grams per liter of salt. And then C2, the concentration stream 2, can be 1 gram per liter. So all this to solve the problem, what is C3? Well, we're going to take that same approach. In equals out. And to get the mass in, now, so first we're just looking at the flow rates, but when we multiply a flow rate times concentration, our liters are going to cancel out, and that's going to leave us with units of grams per second. That's going to be a mass flow rate. Let me write it out here. So in we have Q1C1 plus Q2C2 equals Q3C3. We fill in the values. 1 liter per second times 10 grams per liter plus 2 liters per second times 1 gram per liter equals 3 liters per second times C3. So what I was saying about the mass flow rate is that we have liters per second and grams per liter. So liters cancel out. That leaves us with units of grams per second. Same thing here. Liters cancel out. So let's rearrange for C3 before we do any of the calculations. This is you know, a big small trick I, I recommend to make a big difference in reducing mistakes, because every time we start putting things into the calculator, it's just easy to drop a digit somewhere. So I try to do that all in one step. C3 equals 1 liter per second. 10 grams per liter plus 2 liters per second times 1 gram per liter all over 3 liters per second. And so let's simplify this a bit. 1 times 10, that's 10 grams per second plus 2 grams per second over 3 liters per second equals 12 3. So the seconds cancel out because these will flip on top. So you'll have grams per second times seconds per liter. So seconds cancel out and you have grams per liter. 12 over 3 grams per liter equals 4 grams per liter. 
And so that's your concentration of the mixed stream. Now, this so this works just like this for all conservative components. Um, and it starts to get more complicated when, when we look at components that are growing or decaying in the system. And that's what we're going to get into the next video. So I hope this has been helpful to you. And um, if you have any specific questions, things that you'd like to like for me to address in, in my videos, please put them in the comments. And if they're generally applicable, I'll, I'll do them. So I hope this is useful. Take care.